Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's Member Spotlight brought to you by Brentwood Chamber of Commerce. My name is Colin Barber and I'm the Chairman of Brentwood Chamber of Commerce. I also run a business school for management mechanic, uh, working as a trainer, co consultant and coach specialising in psychology in business. Uh, my objective there is to help you understand how people work. Uh, more importantly, our guest today is Leanne Turner from Aiken Arms, member of Brentwood Chamber of Commerce, and we're going to find out a little bit more uh, about Leanne and her organisation. And uh, just to remind you, this afternoon's webinar is being recorded, so if you've got any friends or colleagues who weren't able to watch or weren't able to join us this afternoon, uh, then the webinar will be available to view uh, either later on today or tomorrow on the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel. So I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us this afternoon and hope you find the uh, presentation interesting uh, and uh, informative. Um, just also to mention to you, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask uh, Leanne, then feel free to uh, put them to me. I'll ask them on your behalf. Uh, there is a Q&A button uh, somewhere on your screen, probably at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you do have a question for Leanne, if you just hit the Q&A button and type your question in. And as I say, uh, I will endeavour to uh, uh, put all the questions to Leanne uh, on your behalf. And uh, I think that's everything in terms of uh, the practicalities, how it works. We're looking for around about half an hour for this afternoon's chat. And um, I'm sure it'll be interesting and uh, as always very informative. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce you to our guest this afternoon, Leanne Turner. Are you there, Leanne? Yes, hello. Good. Hi, everybody. Good. Welcome. Hi, and uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And uh, you've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce for um, two or three years now. I just wondered, um, has that helped your organisation in terms of uh, helping it to grow and helping increase the awareness of the organisation? It has. I've had lots of really generous support from members of the Chamber who have either given their time, they fundraised for us um, or directed me to people with expertise. And that's really helped us grow. Good, excellent, good. And um, one thing I wanted to mention, I'm sure you'll probably mention it anyway, but just to um, uh, highlight at the beginning, one of the reasons why we're, we're um, spotlighting your organisation today is because of the, the um, well, do you want to tell us about what's coming up this week or next week? Yes, so it's going to be Baby Loss Awareness Week across the UK. Um, and that's where um, we try and raise awareness about the impact of loss on, on families. And a um, big part of the week is remembrance of babies who have sadly died right okay good and um just to um to clarify the when you say uh, it's, it's people who've lost a baby either during pregnancy or, or a very young baby either at, at birth or shortly after birth is that correct yes baby loss um sort of encapsulates um from very early stages from the moment you know that you're pregnant a couple are pregnant um through to an our organization we work with up to uh, 12 months old so from a very early mis miscarriage um, through to a later loss um, in right. infancy is so, uh, yeah. so what baby loss sort of encapsulates. But then there's yeah. also parents who may have lost um, a baby, you know, through surrogacy even um, is another is another area. So parents who may not have physically carried their baby, but still their baby has died. Right. OK. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you like to just give us a little bit of background in terms of how Aiken Arms came about and uh, how long you've been um, running the organisation? Yes, yeah, so this year is our 10th year since we were founded um, and I founded the charity um, one year after losing my son James. Um, so I was um, 21 weeks pregnant with James and we found out he was ex very, very poorly um, and he, he died and was born at 23 weeks. And, and I, um, I didn't come up with the idea completely on my own, I have to be honest. There was an Australian charity called Bears of Hope who although I didn't receive a bear from them, I linked up with their forum and their network. And they, um, I asked them after sort of a year of realizing that my arms ached for my baby and a comforter would be really helpful. Um, could I maybe start something similar over here to reach out and help myself heal from my loss by helping other families? And so that's um, how I started just by getting, we had, we fundraised for 20 teddy bears that went into Queen's Hospital in Romford uh, about 10 years ago. That's how we started. Right, amazing, yeah. And what about the name? Did, did you come up with the name straight away? Because that's a very appropriate name. It's it's how I felt, Colin. I just, I, it was only very few days after James was born, I'd given birth to him, that I just had this really intense physical sensation of, of aching. Um, and no one tells you, no one really warns you about that, um, but it is, this you know strange 
does this not strange but I suppose natural desire to want to hold your baby and my arms ached um, and it was I remember googling it why are my arms aching and finding on the um, compassionate friends charity website I, they listed it as one of the signs um, and symptoms of grief after the loss of a baby so I knew I wasn't going yeah. crazy yeah. Um, yeah and then when I asked other parents if they felt the same it wasn't just me um, they were like absolutely and so we just it just captured what we're trying to do, you know, to fill, fill something and find us, fill the space in those aching arms. Mm -hmm. And do you think that in those 10 years, uh, people's awareness or attitude to baby loss has changed or um, improved or if that's the right word? I think it's more, it is definitely more talked about. So the government uh, must be think four years ago and they, they recognized baby loss awareness week for the first time. And we had a um, reception in the speakers rooms down in you know, the House of Col Commons, which was a huge step forward. Um, and there's the um, all party parliamentary group on baby loss, which some some people might be aware of about um, four years ago, two brave um, MPs stood up, one being um, Will Quince MP from Colchester, who bravely shared their story of loss and brought about the All Party Parliamentary Group. So in that sense, yes, and the improvement in care, yes, the hospital, the government are doing a lot more. But sadly, um, just last week, there was a celebrity couple in the States who shared images of their bereavement. Um, and they came under such scrutiny and such criticism um, we, we put a post up on our Facebook page about it saying how, uh, how frustrating that is that still in society they can't share, you know, your baby loss. Um, and we had over 200 comments and over 100,000 people re reaches just from our post of commenting on that. So there's a lot of passion because they're about it. So more people are talking. TV shows capture it sometimes. You know, it's a bit more out there. But there's still a lot of people who belittle it and don't see yeah, it as a, yeah. as a and that's right. yeah i remember the one last week and I, I remember reading about or hearing about the reaction yeah it was quite very strong wasn't it some people's reaction to it yeah yeah mm. and and some of the you know itv did a fantastic piece of work um a piece on it which was really positive but there was a lot of other individual people who just who just didn't get it you know, just yeah, lack of yeah. compassion right so um, before we find a little bit more about Aiken Arms and where you are today, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about um, Leanne pre pre Aiken Arms. What was your what was your career? What was it? Mm. What were you doing before then? What, what, tell us a little bit about your history. I was a teacher, oh, um, right. okay. to put it simply. <laughs> um, so I what, taught. What age, group, what age were you teaching? What age group? Secondary, secondary. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so I taught in Australia for four years. That's where I trained, did my Bachelor of Education, trained, and I was a history and English teacher. I came over to see the history I was teaching about in Europe, um, mm -hmm. see it for myself, and uh, yeah, fell in love with the Britain stayed. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, I had a got a fantastic job opportunity at the school I was teaching within, teaching at in North London um, to become an ethnic minority achievement teacher. So that was around working with newly arrived refugee asylum seeker pupils and also working with teachers to better their teaching and learning strategies. So that was a great job. I stayed there. I, I expected to be in the country for a year. Seven years later, I left that job and got a great job with Kensington and Chelsea Council, um, working in the school improvement service as an education consultant. Um, right. yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah, that's where I was okay. for, till 2012. And sadly, the government funding changed and we all got, our whole team got made redundant. Right. So you were still working when you founded the charity then? Yes, yes. I was uh, on some antiquated little mobile phone. I just I had two little bits of my journey, which were above ground, which I can yeah. get onto Twitter and, and um, Facebook and start growing things. So yeah, mm -hmm. and it was when I was made redundant that it was the opportunity. I either kept it as a small you know, uh, thing that I did as a, on the side of my career or I gave it the chance to grow. And so my partner and I discussed it and we made the decision that I could grow the charity. Um, so it's that 2013 is when it really, we really took off. Right, okay, interesting. And um, what did you pick up from the, uh, um, from working as a teacher? What, what sort of things did you learn from that that you've been able to apply to the charity? I think it's the people skills. 
you know, it's, it's absolutely, you know, my, my team, my staff that I employ now, um, it's all about them and how, how happy they feel in their job and how contented they feel in their job and having sort of um, some individual endeavour to help me grow the charity and that it's not just, um, you know, this is your job, sit down, get on with the admin. It's that we're about people and that's what education is about. It's about people and growing young people, young teenagers and older teenagers. And I think that's what I apply um, with my team and also the around strategy and planning. You know, I was in teaching, I wouldn't do something half-hearted. It had to be done well. So I've learned that to just plan, short-term plans, long-term planning, um, and then reflect on it and evaluate what's worked and what hasn't worked. Um, so I think that's what I use those skills definitely. In. Right. And also my ability to speak out and do, and do training that I do with health professionals. So mm, I've got that yeah. education background. Yeah. Good. And you're now the CEO of uh, Aiken Arms, so it's actually a full-time uh, full role. Yes, yeah. I started off as um, for eight hours a week as the uh, coordinator, <laughs> the charity coordinator. Yeah. Um, and then it's just slowly, as we've grown and as um, the organisation's got bigger, um, yes, I was lucky enough to be appointed as the CEO. So what are the main challenges you face uh, in running a charity as opposed to, I mean, I know you haven't actually run a business as such in the past, but as opposed to what might be the challenges faced by um, some of other members in running the business, is it broadly the same sort of thing, issues or are there different issues involved in uh, running a charity? I think, I mean, I've learned a lot from being in the Chamber of Commerce. I've learned a lot about the business perspective and meeting actually, and meeting and seeing how um, people like me who are sort of working from home, working, passionate about their own their own business or organization there's the same challenges you know of reaching out of ensuring your funding is coming in ensuring um, your longevity because you put so much heart and soul into it you don't want it to just be a flash in the pan um, but I think with charity it's um, that we don't have a commodity to sell so um, and the work I do even with training we give that away freely um, because we want awareness to be raised so we don't charge for our training for hospitals for example yeah. so I think the thing with the difference is we've got to put our, our parents first our bereaved parents first but we also I have to balance now the business elements of the charity so I've still that's much more my role now is looking at making sure our finances are all tip-top in order we're reporting back to the um, Charity Commission every year, making sure our governance is all in place um, and that we're not doing anything illegal, not necessarily on purpose, but just through ignorance. So that's, for me, because I didn't run a business, I've had a huge learning curve. Um, but, but combating that by calling on people with a business mind and some charity experience to help me with those things. And you have a board of trustees, presumably, do you? Yes, yeah. yeah. And what, what's your source of income then, apart from presumably donations? Is there any other source of income or is it just based on donations? Um, until recently, it has been all donations. Um, but we've luckily this year, because um, of the pandemic, we've applied for more grants than we have before. Um, and we've got granted um, um, a grant from the government and the lottery funding. They worked together to distribute some funding. So we got a small grant from them. And I've got one uh, lovely um, corporate, um, Zurich Insurance UK, who we've been working with and collaborating on for, for a number of years. Um, they gave us a grant up as part of the pandemic, um, sort of COVID um, recovery. Um, but the rest of it's all been fundraising. Right. Very okay. generous donors, very yeah. and mostly parents who are bereaved, who want to give back. So uh, in terms of your relationship with the parents, uh, obviously, as you said, it all started off by uh, giving um, the bereaved parents a teddy bear to help them uh, overcome the, the difficult period. Do you maintain any sort of contact or relationship with these parents or is it a fairly short time span in which, in, in which you interact with them? So in some cases, we won't ever meet the parents or in lots of the cases. So our, our connection is through the hospitals. So we build our rapport. We're working now with 162 hospitals right. and we link with the bereavement midwives and they are 
predominantly and the nurses in in early pregnancy units or neonatal units they're the person who's using that teddy bear as a conduit to opening up discussions with the parents about their care and support and their emotional well-being going forward right Parents, over around a thousand parents a year contact us directly to request a teddy bear, which we'll post out to them. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently, because we got the funding from Zurich um, through the pandemic, we've just opened up a, uh, we're calling it Supporting Arms uh, Befriending Service. So we're now able to hold, we're, just, we're seeing it as that we're trying to hold their parents' hands a little bit longer, rather than it just be about the teddy bear and directing them on to other charities we can actually give a bit more support now. Okay. Um, so well, counselling, you mean? Counselling services? or? Yeah, we're not, we have got a counsellor who is running the befriending service, but we're talking, we're calling it more befriending right. um, because we, we don't have the capacity to, to do counselling and there's fantastic mm. charities who already do it. So we yeah. sensitively direct people to the specialists yeah. because we cover all ranges of loss. Most of the other charities in the baby loss sector, they'll focus on a specific gestation or right. specific condition. Yeah. We don't want to be seen as sort of trying to be the generalists and specialize in everything. So we have good relationships with other charities. So if someone came to us if they experienced sadly an ectopic pregnancy, we might talk to them, be there on the phone for a few calls and then direct them to their topic pregnancy trust. Um, so they can get specialist support, yeah. for example. Okay. And um, if my memory serves me correctly, I, I seem to remember one stage you told me that the teddy bears, if someone donates a teddy bear, then that, that person has some sort of link with the person the teddy bear is given to. Is that right? Or is it yeah. given in memory of someone else? Is that correct? That's right. So there's one of our little teddies. So yeah, lovely. Each of these teddies are a gift from one bereaved family to another. Right, that's right. So yeah, yeah. This little one is been given. I don't know if you can see that, Colin. It's been yes, given. yeah. Dar yeah. Dar Darla. Darla, yeah. So yeah. this little bear, Darla's family have donated this teddy bear with the intention that it gets gifted to another bereaved family. Right. So, and then the idea of being gifted that bear and the reason the label is attached to the teddy is it's got our website. And then that means they, on our website, will feature all of the different charities that they can go to for help and support, right. depending on their okay. circumstance. Yeah. So it's not just another leaflet that's, that you get loads of paperwork when you're discharged mm. from hospital, um, or you might get nothing. You know, earlier losses, often they won't get anything. Yeah. Um, but if they yeah. get a teddy, that's a lifeline to some support. And the families who give the bears love to be able to dedicate a bear going forward. Because it's a recognition of their baby's life. Um, when lots of people yeah, sure. do dismiss early, you know, early losses more more than any, mm. and there's no record, there's no birth certificate, there's no death mm. certificate, there's no registration. Um, but that little bear's got their baby's name on it, and it means something to somebody else now when it's gifted forward. Yeah. And is there any interaction between the two families or is that something you, you can't really... Sometimes uh, they find each other, Colin. Um, right. we, we don't encourage them to... We don't no. put people in touch. No. Um, but sometimes, about 10% of families will put a thank you on our Facebook page. Right, yeah, yeah. And then they might notice it and see that and then reach out to each other. Right. Um, You've mentioned Facebook a few times. Presumably that's something which has changed over the last 10 years. The, the amount of social media... How, how, how prevalent social media is in your organisation, presumably, as, as with many other organisations. It's really always been really important, Colin, really important. Um, before we had a website, um, it was it was it was me <laughs> on the train yeah. trying to oh, yeah. set yeah. things up. Yeah. Um, but now, yes, we have just got approval for our budget uh, to increase our budget. So we've got a social media manager um, for 12 hours a week. And we've got a uh, administrator who's going to start working with her just for a couple of hours a week. The thing is, we have to be very careful with on our pages. We have to look out for people who maybe need some help, um, and we need to look out that people are saying kind things to each other, which mostly they are. But we make mm. sure that that is happening, and we're trying to get a balance on social media between reaching out for care to care for parents, celebrating our fundraisers. Um, acknowledging our corporate supporters um, and acknowledging all the seasonal, you know, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Days. So it, it's that's why having social media managers was a really yeah. the right move for us because I yeah. couldn't handle it all. I can't keep a that check that balance is there. 
Um, no, so I would highly recommend anyone who you know is starting to find it's getting too much for them in terms of social media. There are we, we contract somebody and we started off. She just did a couple hours a week, and as our followers has grown, we've we've um, increased her hours. Um, yeah. So, and it's our shop window, really. Uh, it is our main interaction. And we bring a lot of fundraising in through social media. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. So do you have anything special planned for uh, Baby Loss Awareness Week? Any special events? I know it's difficult with the um, coronavirus, but do you have any, um, what, what are your plans? Yeah, so we've got, um, this year the theme is isolation. And that's across the, from, we're members of the Baby Loss Alliance. So we're part of that decision making around what theme is. So this year is around isolation because parents through the lock, tightest to lockdowns, they can't, partners can't be there for baby's births. Partners can't be there for bad news scans. Babies can't, um, sorry, partners can't be there for all of those, um, what, you know, reassuring scans, even if it's a happy outcome. So lots of families um, are feeling isolated after the loss of a baby at this time. So that's yeah. the theme. Mm. So this year they're running a, um, where the Alliance is running a different focus group for each day on social media. So it's starting off, I think it's starting off with partners um, and dads and partners. Um, and we've got a really lovely um, lady from New Zealand got in touch with a beautiful video. So we're going to feature her song and we're going to show a film about a dad who really did get to the brink, very much to the brink um, through his bereavement. Um, we've got on the Monday night, we've got a lovely collaboration with a theatre, an internationally renowned theatre company called Theatre RE, who we're doing, and I'm on the panel, we're doing a panel discussion around um, addressing and uh, performing taboo and sensitive topics when the actor hasn't lived that experience. So maybe you know, people in the chamber from um, the Brentwood Theatre might be interested in that and that's free to join. Um, and then the, the week, we've got other little things th happening throughout the week, but then we end with the wave of light um, is the, the last day of the, the 14th and everyone around the world in their time zone lights a candle for an hour at 7 p.m. Um, oh, and the Perfect. other thing too is the lighting up pink and blue. So uh, Bennett's funeral has always supported us every year with this, where they light up their front window pink and blue. So we know lots of big landmark buildings can't be lit up pink and blue this year because they haven't got the staff there to do it. So we're asking businesses, people at home, to do some sort of little window tribute, some little pink and blue light. Mm. Um, so if anyone in the chamber wants to talk pink to me blue. about that, yeah. I've got some little simple ideas that they can just put something yeah. up in the window yeah actually interesting enough i drove past bennett's this morning and uh, i noticed they were in the process of changing their window display so presumably uh, that's the uh, um baby loss awareness week window they're just doing today are they yeah hopefully yeah i need to get them a banner up there <laughs> i need to yeah, right. take some yeah. bears I'll up for that next time i go past yeah 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 so it'd be great to and st thomas has got involved last year st thomas is so um if any other businesses want to do a window display simply like the rainbows you know for the nhs Mm. It's something simple like that, just a pink and blue theme to remember yeah, sure. um, through Baby Loss Awareness Week. Yeah. So, so I know it's probably a difficult question, but when you when you think back 10 years to when you started this uh, uh, charity, did you have any idea um, that it would be growing and become a full-time uh, organisation? Or <laughs> when did you realise it actually was going to become uh, like a, a full-time uh, um, I think when I dreamed that it could was... Yeah. Sort of in 2013 right. when I when I got made redundant and I was like yeah. right I'm going to give this a good chance um, and we've slowed we I think the secret to our success is that we have grown slowly and steadily and taken advice from others um, whether that be business or charity sector um, and all of us who were the founding trustees we were all were bereaved so we all have had to go along our own journey mm. Um, mm. but it, we got to around 20 15 where our mission had always been to get 10 hospitals on board each year 10 new hospitals on board and in one day i got 12 hospitals by doing a stall at a conference oh wow and the, we had the agm the next day and the treasurer was like yeah okay that blows the budget already <laughs> i need to go back <laughs> to the drawing board yeah um and once so you mentioned actually the number of hospitals you've got now but mm. I, i've got no idea how many hospitals are around the country so what, how does that relate to the number of hospitals in the country as a, a percentage roughly I believe there's around 300 NHS okay. hospitals. Right. 
but not all of those will have maternity services. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. we are at, we're, we're 162. We're getting pretty close to pretty much all the maternity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Good. But our, our plans this year are really to sort of deepen our links with those hospitals. Um, we need to be careful of money this year. You know, we, mm. our big fundraisers didn't happen through the spring. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're hoping to deepen those links and really strengthen those with hospitals um, rather than continue this year to pursue more hospitals. If new hospitals come on board, come to us, which they have already, we'll, we're not going to say no. Mm. Uh, we're just not yeah. going to sort of pursue right. them as so you, haven't, you haven't got any plans to go international or anything like that then <laughs> no <laughs> we do get requests for teddy bears internationally yeah um, sure yeah and yeah. We, we do send them but they they have to be paid for because all of our funds are raised in england mm. and in the united kingdom and under the charity commission registration with england and wales we can, that money has to stay in the united kingdom okay yeah. but we do yeah. if parents wish to purchase a bear from abroad then yeah. um we, they can do that and they have to pay for the postage but for okay, parents here it's they're they're free right and, and are all bears the same are they all identical they are now <laughs> they weren't over the years yeah um, i can imagine yeah yeah they are now um and so I you have one, one supplier yes one supplier um, they stuck with us from the start that was a good business move for anybody oh, okay. thinking yeah. we um we approached um keel toys um, because I heard they based down in Ashford in Kent. Yeah. I heard they gave away some teddy bears for raffles and mm -hmm. things to different charities. So I wrote to them and um, they came back and said, oh, no, sorry, we, um, we only support local charities. And I said, oh, well, I'm intending to, I've got family in Kent and I'm intending to get our bears into hospitals in Kent. And he said, okay, then. He gave us two boxes of bears. Ten years ago, we last year purchased 11,000 bears just in one year from them. We've spent tens of thousands of pounds with Keel Toys. They do get us a good price for our bears now, you know, as best they can from the factories. But it, I think it's a wise business move to just reach out to a charity, get us going in that sense by donating that first two boxes of bears and we've stayed loyal to them. Um, that's a really interesting uh, art example actually yeah so it's really fascinating yeah as you say and just just from them reaching out to a charity maybe a little push from you and uh, look how it's benefited them and, yeah uh, and they've never wanted any praise or glory you know they haven't wanted their name plastered over anything to say who they are um but they've worked with us over the years and helped design this little bear because before we used to just buy their standard bears take all the right. ribbons off um mm -hmm. put our own ribbons on um but then that got, it was getting too, too much for our volunteers. So they worked with us to design our little bear. They're great quality bears. So we haven't gone anywhere else. Great. Wow. That's wonderful. That's a really good story. Yeah. Really good way to sort of draw it to a close. Um, actually, one final thing I'm going to ask you though is uh, obviously you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce and um, a lot of people watching this afternoon will be members of the Chamber of Commerce or indeed uh, uh, businesses based in Brentwood and the surrounding area. Um, you're obviously a, a, a Brentwood organisation. Um, is there one thing which particular way in which you've, the viewers or the members of the Chamber of Commerce could help you? Anything particularly you would really like to, to ask them? This is your opportunity. Okay, so we've just recently developed a little um, digital badge and it's just a little round aching arms. Um, is this like this little logo? Right. Uh, adult yeah. logo. And it's a digital badge and it says aching arms supporter. So if you wanted, I could, any chamber members who are interested, I can email that to you. And you can just put it on the bottom of your email signatures with a link to our website. And that is a way for you to A, potentially reach out to customers or clients who themselves are bereaved. Um, and it also helps raise awareness of aching arms. So it doesn't, it's not going to cost members anything, but it's showing your support and it will be really heartening for me to then know that um, chamber members have, that's one simple way you can support aching arms by just saying, we support the work that they're doing um, and we want to grow their, their organization. Of course, so just there's to clarify, it's just a little, it's just a little like, like electronic logo, which we put on a part of our signature on our emails. Yeah. yeah. Yes, or on your website or yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. And it's really, for me, it's, it's things around just, if you see things that we tweet or you see things that we share on our social media, please 
forward them on, share them on onward and, and be proud. You know, whether it's, I do a lot now with the local Facebook groups. I, mm. I mentioned, you know, I'm, a, I'm the founder of this um, charity. I, I live in, in Brentwood and here's what we're doing. Please share with your, your contacts. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so that's a really simple way. Of course, you could become an ambassador. People could talk. They want to talk about the charity to other organizations on our behalf. You want to fundraise for us. Uh, choosers of charity of the year there's all of that but I this new my new thinking this year is just just put a little digital badge on to your signature I'm a, I'm a charity member of your you know chamber of commerce why not support us just in that simple little way um, yeah certainly yeah that's a great idea Good. And we're quite we're not ashamed to mention businesses who have supported us mm, no, <laughs> so, fair enough. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Good. Excellent. Well, it's been really interesting talking to you, Leanne. I feel as I've learned a little bit more about the um, the background to your organisation, and uh, I'm sure hopefully the people who've watched this afternoon have uh, found it interesting as well. Um, I'm going to come back to you in a second because I'm going to ask you a little bit about our next guest. But let me just bring up a little um, uh, preview of our next guest. Uh, for those of you who don't watch regularly, we do now run these webinars on a monthly basis, uh, always uh, spotlighting on a different member of the uh, Brentwood Chamber of Commerce. And in November, our guest is Robin Bailey from Capricorn Media. Um, provision of date is to 12th November. We do need to confirm the date and the time, but look out for details of that on our website and uh, on our mail shots. And Robin has uh, been a member of the uh, Chamber of Commerce for some time now, and he's a specialist in uh, video productions and um, broadcasting. Actually, uh, used to work for the BBC as a broadcaster. Uh, but the reason I mentioned that to you, Leanne, is because uh, you were just telling me before that uh, Robin's actually producing a video uh, for your organisation. Is that correct? Or tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. So I met Robin through Chamber of Commerce um, at bre business breakfasts. Um, gave me his card. I always said, if you need anything. And uh, yeah, a good 18 months probably went past and I still kept that card. And we'd got to a point last year where I was traveling a lot for doing training with hospitals. I was traveling the, you know, the four nations and it was getting too much. It was too, too difficult. So we decided it was time to make a training film that with midwives who I've already got great relationships with, they can simply use that as part of their study days. So I phoned up Robin and said, could you help us with this? And he was like, absolutely. So, yeah, we're about to, on the 28th of October, we're going to have a day where we're filming. Um, and it's going, he's also filming some testimonials with parents um, using the power of technology, some online interviews. Um, but, and we're going, we're working with Broomfield Hospital, um, with using the, the midwife there is going to be interviewed to create our training film. So, yeah, Colin, uh, great help, Colin. Wonderful. So that's a really good example of uh, how chamber members can uh, help each other to uh, develop their business. And uh, I'm sure you'll find Robin very professional and uh, a wealth of experience to um, uh, lend to your video. So uh, we look forward to seeing that. And uh, obviously we will look forward to uh, hearing more about Robin Bailey and Capricorn Media next month. So all that remains really is to thank you very much for joining us this, after, this afternoon, Leanne. And also obviously thank everyone who's watched this afternoon. And just to remind you, if you didn't get to see the beginning of the, um, the webinar, if you joined us halfway through or whatever, or if you've got any friends who want to watch the webinar, um, it will be available on the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel. Uh, and incidentally, you can see all of the previous uh, member spotlights on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, just go to YouTube and type Brentwood Chamber of Commerce in and that should bring you up. So thanks very much to everyone. Um, I think it's just about to stop raining now. So that's one good thing. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you all again next month. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.